to things and stuff, we talk about stuff that we think is interesting. Today's topic is genius. Is it born or is it made? Recent research suggests that genius is not born, but is in fact made through intensive effort. Studies have shown that it takes five times as much effort to become an expert in something as it does to become an accomplished amateur. What does this mean for you and me? Well, it means if you, like me, were told as a kid that you were really, really smart and therefore assumed that you would amount to something really good, you got it wrong. Because if you don't put the effort in, then nothing's ever going to come of it. Most geniuses in any field have an IQ of approximately 115 to 130, which is the same as 14% of the population. 14% of the population aren't considered geniuses. And in fact, people whose IQ is above that quite often don't amount to anything at all by today's standards. They simply live happy, fairly well-off lives, never living up to the potential of their IQ. A particularly important effect, as it turns out, is mentoring. Most people who became what might be considered geniuses or extreme experts had one single mentor who was very involved in their life. Other people who showed similar promise when they were younger but didn't get a mentor never amounted to anything. There's also a rule called the 10-year rule, which states that whatever it is that you're trying to do, it will take you at least 10 years of extremely hard work to become considered a genius or an expert at it. For instance, even Mozart, who showed considerable aptitude for music at three years old, took 10 years of intensive study before he produced anything that was considered of genius level. This has been shown in many other people. So if you want to become a genius at something, Sit down, start work, and ten years on, maybe you'll get somewhere. Of course, if you're into athletics, it could take even longer. Olympic-level swimmers usually take 15 years of training before they make it onto the team. It sometimes appears as if people who are geniuses have better memories than the rest of us. For instance, chess experts can look at a chessboard for only five seconds and identify positions of almost all the pieces even an hour later whereas an amateur could probably only identify the positions of about five pieces. However, that effect doesn't carry over to other areas. Show a chess expert a list of 20 numbers for five seconds, and he won't remember many more than you will. The effect is called clustering. A chess expert is so used to looking at chess boards that instead of seeing individual pieces, he sees clusters of game types. Therefore, he can identify far more pieces by chunking them together like that in his memory. Also, these things don't carry over into other disciplines unless they're very closely related. Try playing a chess expert at poker sometime if he's never played it before. He won't do any better than you will. Likewise, when sports stars move over to other disciplines, they're quite often easily beaten by amateurs because they're out of their area of expertise and all the work they've done just doesn't count for anything anymore. So all you smart people out there who think you'll amount to something without trying hard, I'm afraid it's all rubbish. I'm very disappointed too. And all you people out there who think, well, I just wasn't that great at school. I'm surely never going to come to anything. Don't believe it for a second. Ten years of hard work and you could be collecting a Nobel Prize. Well, that's all for Things and Stuff today. Thanks for listening.